Hi everyone, it's Emmeline here and I'm back with another Cornwall Wildlife Trust Nature Trail and this time I'm here with the lovely Lauren and we're at Hellman Tor Nature Reserve or Complex of Nature Reserves and yeah, can you give us a little introduction to yourself? Lauren? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Lauren and I'm the Beaver Officer uh, for Cornwall Wildlife Trust. So I've been in post about three months now. Um, and my job is to prepare for a wild release beaver license. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, like you said, this Helm and Tor Nature Reserve, and it's a mm -hmm. complex of about six or seven different nature reserves across 300 hectares. So yeah. it's amazing habitat, and we'll see you today why it is amazing. Yeah. Um, but it's really diverse. It's a mosaic of different habitats, really. Yeah. So my job is to um, prepare yeah, the license application to get beavers released onto the site. So that's quite a long process. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, we'll so tell you more cool. about it as we walk along. Yeah, we're going to speak about some cool beaver facts. <laughs> and yeah, just walk around and see what species we find along the way as well. You know, if beavers were to dam water and it was to fill up, that would be amazing. Yeah. So this area over here? Yeah, so you can see it's a bit of a hollow, so this area yeah. used to be um, used for tin streaming. Yeah. So it has the very kind of hollow and hummock um, topography, so you can see these hollows um, all around the reserve, uh, you know, something that would would be uh, made into a bit of a wetland if beavers were to, were to be here, so yeah. yeah. As we're walking around I can just see there's just so many different fern species and yeah, the world of ferns is a whole other thing. There are so many different types and we just spotted some, what looks like deer fern over there, which, yeah, makes sense because I believe that fern grow, likes to grow in acidic soils and that kind of suits the environment yeah, we're in, doesn't it? And there's also another fern that is apparently around or has apparently been seen around here called the royal fern. Mm. It's really big and it's not as common, so... It'd be cool if we can maybe look out for that today as well. The Cornwall Wildlife Trust have a project which is ongoing called Rewilding Helmand Tor. Mm -hmm. So that includes um, the Helmand Tor Nature Reserve and the six or seven nature reserves around it. It's all about letting, bringing nature back and mm -hmm. letting it kind of self-regulate its processes there. So we want to get to a stage where nature can um, regulate itself and we, humans won't have to intervene yeah. um, to manage the, the habitat at all. Part of this is also um, carefully reintroducing some species. Yeah. So that can include uh, cattle, uh, it could include pigs, which already a few pigs have been released, mm -hmm. but also it can include beavers. Um, so this area on the Helmantor Nature Reserve complex has been identified as amazing habitat for beavers yeah. um, so we know that beavers were once in Cornwall we have evidence of that and this has been identified as a site that would be suitable for them to return. And one of the main benefits beavers bring is through their creation of dams so beavers build dams because they like to um, feel safe in water and yeah. that's kind of if you ever if you ever see one that's how they move uh, most easily through water they can go on land mm -hmm. um, as well but they have um, they kind of webbed back feet and they do swim really well so in because they want um, to move in water they yeah. build and engineer dams so that they can go to and from their lodge which is where they live safely so they make uh, channels out into the water and they can access food sources and they can return to their lodge safely um, so in doing that they provide new habitats for animals um, so loads of different um, animals love this so anything that likes wetland um, or that likes standing deadwood so mm -hmm. when beavers coppice trees they can create um, areas of deadwood and that provides amazing habitat for really rare species uh, such as the willow tip. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, we're really excited about the prospect of beavers being on Helmand Tor. Yeah, funny enough, as we were just standing here just now, literally just spotted that fern that I was mentioning earlier. Um, the royal fern. A really big fern. And just, yeah, it looks a bit different from most ferns, really. Um, 
I think it's one of the prettiest. But yeah, it's just so cool to see it because I haven't actually seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it once before, but not for a long time. We've already gone through like a lake, a wetland. Now there's loads of gorse, and I can see some yes, like bell scrubland as well. It's a big one. Yeah. So this site is actually. Um, the Helmantor Nature Reserve sites are suffering for a bit of scrub encroachment. Here you can just see um, what our reserves teams have done as a management technique. They've, they've, I think they call it a scrape. Mm -hmm. So they've cleared the area to try and let it reset because it was becoming a bit dominated by species that um, they didn't want here. Mm -hmm. They do that as a management technique. So actually we spend quite a lot of time and resource on human management techniques up here, um, partly due to the absence of herbivores like beavers. Mm -hmm. So if they were to be brought back to the Helmantor Reserve, it would help to manage um, and create a natural management process up, yeah. up on the tour. So there's loads of this rush, type of rush here, type of grass all around these kind of wetland, um, kind of boggy areas. And there is a really cool fact behind this plant. In the wartime, um, they, people actually used to collect this and take the tissue from the inside, this white foamy tissue, and they used to use that to make wicks for candles. So yeah, when situations were dire and they needed some more kind of light sources, rush was really important, really important. So we've just found lots and lots of the devil's bit scabious, which is a really, really interesting plant, a really, really important plant for various species, specifically the marsh fritillary butterfly, um, the larvae of this um, butterfly species, the little caterpillars, they feed on the devil's bit scabious. Um, so you often find kind of like the silk webbing that the larvae then kind of like crawl out from wrapped around this plant so really important for that butterfly which is a rare butterfly species so really nice to just like see it at the reserve and also there's some cool folklore around the devil's bit scabious which gives it its really unique name so apparently a long time ago, the devil himself was jealous of this flower because this flower has been used historically for so many medicinal purposes to treat so many different illnesses. So the devil was so jealous that he bit the ends of the roots of the devil's bit scabious and apparently stopped its healing properties. And if you look, if you were to see the roots of this wonderful flower, you'll see that the roots actually do in fact look like they, they have been bitten into. They're really stubby and short, um, but yeah, still got its healing properties, obviously. So what's the day in the life like of a beaver officer? So, um we need to prepare for the wild release license application. So the beaver officer role is um, doing just that. So it's about getting all the data we need to show that beavers are suitable to be released onto this reserve. It's about going out and speaking to all the local stakeholders and landowners um, to hear any of their concerns or queries and about providing information. Um, and then it's about planning the arrival of the beavers if it should be um, accepted. So at the moment you can't uh, release wild beavers. Um, we're waiting for the government to give the green light on accepting applications. So mm -hmm. over the next year we're in the planning phase. Um, so yeah, lots of exciting planning coming up. Don't you just think that it's just like the coolest job title ever? Thank you for beaver officer. Yeah, yeah, pretty really good. <laughs> wow, wow, that is so cool. That is amazing. That is the coolest looking caterpillar. I think that is the coolest caterpillar I have ever seen. He looks like a Pokemon. He does. He's like. Doesn't he? He's like caressing. We got a raindrop on the camera. Oh, no. Beep beep beep. <laughs> We just had the coolest finding of the day, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we just we're found. Still at it. Yeah, we're, still, we're just like amazed by this caterpillar. The prettiest looking caterpillar I've ever seen, and the fanciest. He's yeah. like so fancy. It's the pale tussock moth caterpillar, and he is so cool. And we were just, I was just looking in my ID book, um, 
and it said that the larvae, the, the caterpillars, um, actually love to feed on oak and things, or well, they're often surrounded by oak uh, woodlands. So this is perfect, perfect environment because we're yeah. literally just surrounded by loads of oak trees. So yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> Never have I seen something like this. So can you tell me a really cool, well, I'm, I'm sure they're all cool, but a really cool beaver fact? Uh, yeah, so one of the reasons that beavers are actually hunted to extinction in the UK, um, I mentioned earlier for their meat, for, mm -hmm. their, um, for their pelts, mm -hmm. but also they have a scent gland, which is called a castorium gland. Okay. And that secretes uh, castorium and it actually has medicinal properties and then one of those medicinal properties it was used as a very traditional and um paracetamol Whoa. but another use apparently it smells similar to vanilla so which it was is so weird i didn't, never knew that yeah which is weird so it's actually used um or was used for like um, making scents right that's just crazy beaver glands paracetamol vanilla look you just wouldn't ever think all those things go together. <laughs> oh yeah. So Lauren just spotted <laughs> a really rare fungus. This is the hazel glove fungus. And yeah, it's just really rare. So yeah, it's just really cool to see it. And if you, I don't know if you can see, if you zoom in, it actually looks like yeah. almost fingers in gloves which I guess is where it probably gets its name it gets from. Its name. <laughs> and it also really only grows on old hazel trees. And again, it is another good air quality indicator. So yeah, just kind of indicates that the habitat is in good health around here, which is always really lovely. Is that witch's butter? I feel like this is witch, oh, I need to get a bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just found some witch's butter. That's so cool. Okay, another fungus. As we're walking back as well, now we just found. Okay, there's a really big bit up there. Okay. So this one is named witch's butter because of how it looks and it's quite slimy and jelly-like, quite a funny looking fungus. So that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed following us around on this reserve. We literally found so much in a short space of time yeah. really didn't we so much so much diversity here um but yeah as usual keep safe on your wild walks and i'll be back again soon with some more nature trails and yeah thank you so much lauren for showing me around oh thank you and telling me more about beavers it's been really interesting yeah. <laughs> cool see you again soon <laughs> bye